Yama, I'm Jack. This is Newsbreak. Coming up on the show. The Suez Canal cleared. Controversy over these shoes. And we take a look at the sport of rug ball. But before any of that can happen, you gotta press subscribe. After a week stuck in a bit of a pickle, the giant shipping container known as the Ever Given has been freed from the Suez Canal. The holdup has delayed a bunch of deliveries and cost billions of dollars. So how does one ship create such a big mess? With a celebratory toot of the horn and a bit of a sing-along, the Ever Given was on its way. It took seven days of digging and tugging to finally free this behemoth. But while that was happening, 422 ships and billions of dollars worth of cargo were stuck at either end of the canal. The potential for catastrophic disaster was uh, getting closer and closer the longer this ship stayed there. 90% of the world's trade travels by sea and about 12% goes through the Suez. Experts say this ship blocked $10 billion worth of goods every day and it cost the Egyptian government almost $200 million in tolls. Even though the canal is now open, it's caused weeks and maybe even months of delays. This probably goes to show is the fragility perhaps of the global supply chain. The Ever Given has now been taken to a wider part of the canal to be assessed for damage. People are already suggesting ways to stop this kind of thing happening again including making the canal wider and making ships smaller. But for now, authorities have launched an investigation to get to the bottom of what became an enormous global problem. Rapper Lil Nas X has caused a bit of controversy over the release of these shoes, which contain a real drop of human blood. The Old Town Road artist teamed up with a streetwear brand to launch these customised Nike Air Max 97s, calling them Satan Shoes. They're a bit of a tie into Lil Nas's new song, and they sold out pretty much instantly. But many people aren't happy about the whole blood and Satan thing. And now Nike is suing because it wasn't involved in making or selling the shoes. A book from the Captain Underpants series is being pulled from shops and libraries. Author Dave Pilkey says his graphic novel, The Adventures of Ook and Gluk, where the main characters go back in time and learn about Chinese philosophy and kung fu, contains harmful racial stereotypes. He's apologised and says it's not what he intended, but he and the book's publisher have now agreed to stop selling it. What do you get when you cross a cow with a lawn mower? A lawn mower. Now, what do you get when you cross rugby with basketball? Joe finds out, and it's no joke. Welcome to Rugball. And as the name suggests, it's a mishmash of sports, like rugby and basketball and a little bit of wrestling. It's picked up a fair bit of attention on social media recently, but it's left a lot of people, including us, wanting to know more. Rugball isn't actually a new sport. It started about 40 years ago in Russia as a training exercise for wrestlers and it slowly took off. But as chaotic as it looks, in 2003 it became an official sport. Since then, people have taken it really seriously. Like this team, the Russian Bears, who are training to compete in the national championship that's held every year by the Russian Rugball Federation. There are currently nine teams from all around Russia in the comp. And with the recent wave of attention online, rugball enthusiasts are encouraging more people to get involved. If they can handle it, that is. Now, these next stories will have you saying, oh, that's not what I expected. Unless you've been living under a rock or have a fear of volcanoes, you probably know about this one in Iceland that has been erupting over the past couple of weeks. I mean, we've reported on it a bunch of times. Anyway, what you might not have seen is this group of people playing volleyball nearby. Why? Um, well, I'm not sure. Maybe the sound of lava flowing helps them concentrate. Boston Dynamics. They make really cool robots, like this one that can jump over things. Ooh, look at these ones, they're dancing. 
And now they've unveiled their latest creation, a robot that helps move things. Huh. Look, it's not as exciting as we're probably used to, but it looks very practical. Demolishing a building. How hard could it be? This team in Turkey found out when it all went a little sideways. Don't worry, no one was injured. Oh, well, except for the other building. But at least no humans were injured. Well, that's all the news for today, but we'll be back with more tomorrow. And I've got to go find that laptop. Matt!